big door stopper. Yeah. Same shit, different day. Same shit, different day. We got another lunch break unboxing. This, this I could not pass up on such a great deal. So, so we're opening it. I got this. Was looking for a new fun summer. Okay, you know what? I could write an entire essay, an entire 30 minute video on, sorry, the hair is like, did too much today. <coughs> I can go on a tirade, a giant tirade of like the t-shirt, the basic white tee, but like the printed graphic tee. I don't think there's ever, ever an end to it. There's an endless supply of them. It's just a pile of shirts in a mountain that keeps on forming over the years. You just, you can't, you can't be a minimalist and have a set of graphic tees. Cause the idea of the graphic tee is culture, culture itself, and culture is always ever-changing, especially with so many references, so many brands, especially for like street culture. T-shirt is like how culture is exchanged. Now I sound absolutely crazy, and what am I doing talking about t-shirts when I have to go back to work, but unboxing, here we go. Y'all ready for this? Okay, well. <laughs> It came in this green package. How do I open this? Oh shit, is this like brand new? <gasps> I think this is brand new. This is crazy. There's only like 60 bucks. That's insane. Okay, sneak peek. You see that? You see that? Okay, it's not like I skate or anything. <laughs> do love me a skater boy though. So if you skate, slide in DMs. But Supreme did this fun collab with Yoji Yamamoto. And this graphic design of the logo and Yoji's name too is like so good. So good. And I was like, this is the perfect summer tea. Even though like we're halfway through August, essentially. Not even, it's the 10th. Okay, quick haul. I got this in an extra large, kind of scared, because this is an extra large in US size, so I think it's gonna be pretty drapey. BRB. It's too big. It's too big. And sadly, it's already pre-shrunken. Mm. What I think I'm gonna have to do is like wear pretty baggy pants, wide-legged pants to make this work, but. Yeah. It's too big. It's definitely probably a very relaxed fit that this will be teamed up with. So yeah, I think I sh would have been better off with either a medium or a large, but couldn't have beat this at 60 bucks. Honestly, usually I'm someone who doesn't pay more than 30 bucks for a t-shirt, but if it's, if it's a hard collab like this, then yeah. Okay. Well, I gotta go back to work, so be well, do good work, keep in touch. So Hi, hello, it's Saturday and I, I'm going out. I really shouldn't, but I'm going into the city at night just to make it to this event. I'm too much, but 
Fit breakdown. You've seen this shirt before, I'm sure. Rest and recreation. Jazzy. Doing some dancing tonight, and I think it's a bit warm out, and this will be perfect. 51% jeans with the uh, ventilation down here. So, so we're in good hands. And of course, wad necklace. I forget, I, I wear this out a lot, but this is by numbering. I think I've talked about this before. If uh, you go back some videos um, right before I left to LA, there's a vlog out and I do an unboxing of this. Everyone always asks me the time and I don't got it. And this, I, I forget to talk about also, but this is a Korean brand that was curated, found by Object. It's a stationery store. They have like multiple locations, but I got this one from the Hongdae location and it's just a staple. Going out, got my gargantuan bag here. Just my stuff and can I pull it out? Give me a sec. We've got The Apple in the Dark by Clarice Lispector. I've been chomping through this very slowly. So not chomping, but like nibbling. I'm only on page 60, but like, let me tell you, probably her most existential work to date. It's very much The Stranger, but this guy, like the first 30 or so pages is literally this guy trudging through the forest, losing his identity, not knowing how to speak. And then when he does speak, he's speaking to rocks. <laughs> it's, you know, in all the Spectre fashion, kind of insane. It's been interesting. The voice is very, very different from the rest of her work. Okay, anyway, enough blabbering. Let's go.
we have some book updates. I feel like I haven't done a lot of updating. <laughs> okay, that's just Kieran. Hey, Kieran, you'll get a mention. Um, but here to talk to you about some books, some, some thickies. I finished two thickies today. Oh, there are just a bunch of noises going on today. I apologize. But first up, The Apple in the Dark, Clarice Lispector. This is getting a new translation in October, I believe. And I just wanted to read this translation by Rabasa. Oh, yes. Also, I want to make it like a big note to make sure I mention the translators. It is August, and this is my only women in translation read. I feel like I read a majority of like translated women, so it's okay. But it is translated from the Portuguese by Gregory Rabasa. I, I wanted to read this before the new translation because Lispector has mentioned that this is by far her most important work, her most notable one, and she trusts this translation a lot. As always, how do you go about talking about a Lispector book? But I will say, this is one of her most challenging reads. First 30 or 4 pages begins with a man just in the dark, running through the woods, and just like losing all sense of self. And by page 40, he's lost all sense of language, until he ends up at this farm and sort of relearns how to be man, how to be human, how to be humane, how to have hopes and dreams and wonders again. The rest of the book is sort of the repair, the reworkings of, yeah, what it means to be human. And I think by far her most existential work as a wannabe Lispector completionist. I'm, I'm almost there, minus all of the short stories, which I don't think I'll ever really get to because one, that completed collection of short stories is way too big, and two, it's expensive, and three, uh, yeah, I don't got no more money for books. So I at first believed that the darkness and running away from something was sort of uh, her interpretation of Plato's cave, uh, man's curiosity or birth of curiosity outside of darkness. But then there were just some really interesting layers, her usual layers of masculinity and femininity, where I, I thought to think, okay, it's not Plato's cave, but a womb. The man is escaping the womb and begins in there. Um, but like, how do you begin with running away? And it's this almost beautiful, I don't know how to quite describe it, but like this micro macro, if anyone has done hallucinogens, I think you might understand where I might be coming from, but this sort of like micro macro zooming in and out of something and powers of tense and that um, Eames powers of tense video. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this video before, but sort of that in the beginning. And then there's this in the second and third part, there's this beautiful layer where it kind of gets like a apprenticeship or the book of pleasures-ish. From then on, it just, she just builds up upon that. And then it just ultimately becomes this beautiful swirl of a bit of all of her no novels wrapped up into one. But it feels as if this is more plot heavy. Yeah, there's a lot more focus on place and people and the interactions. And though there are moments of poesie uh, throughout the text in her usual, you know, big brain fashion, I think she really loved this novel a lot because she was creating what I think she wanted was the quote unquote conventional novel and achieved that but through her very soul, her usual self that we see throughout all of her text. And I don't think it entirely works. I definitely need to do a rereading of this. It feels very clunky, a bit sluggish to go through, but it's uncomfortable. 
the experience of reading Le Spectre is sometimes uncomfortable and this book just felt like having a whole new human grow inside of you and it's it's the the puberty I think um yeah the extension of puberty and sort of the growing pains of becoming and uh, a tough one to get through I do not recommend this as a first list vector I recommend this like somewhere like lower on your tier of Lispector priorities, but still, it's it's an incredibly interesting novel, and if you are a Lispector fan, if you're part of the cult, I, I think you'll you'll find a lot in this. I'm still thinking about it in terms of how it's affecting me. Ooh, but there's this line. Let me read it for you. They say that before going under forever, a man can see his whole life pass before his eyes. If in just an instant one is born, and if in just an instant one dies, an instant is enough for a whole lifetime. And thinking of that instant for this man, almost terrifying in the human experience, but it's through the terrors of feeling so much and all of these feelings that it makes life worth living quite complex. Uh, I thought I had a hard time with the chandelier, but this this takes the cake. I think another difficult one I will eventually get to is the besieged city, but yeah, one of uh, one of the harder reads, definitely. The Apple in the Dark, Clarice Lispector. After that, I finished The Importance of Being Iceland by Eileen Miles. Still doing this as a buddy read with Sophie. I'm sorry, Sophie, I finished early. I finished early, but I, I just, I have, I've got a lot of reading plans, but thankfully this is really easy to dip back into given that they're just essays. So if Sophie screenshots something, then I can like reference it pretty easily. But I've come to make a realization. I love, the way Eileen Miles thinks. But I don't love their writing. <laughs> I love their poetry. Their poetry just, their very, their voice, their staccato prose and voice is so suited for poetry. And especially their poetry is like very, very particular and just like rhythm wise, it's, it's beautiful. And I love hearing the way they speak and talk and are in conversation but I just don't love their writing. I mean, to call these essays, these are noted as travel essays in art, is way too generous, too generous. If anything, they feel like ink blottings. They feel like half-shot opinions. They feel like notes in a diary, not even a journal. And I don't think there was an editor for this. It just feels like compilations of everything they wrote in their notebooks and then just like crammed it in this very big door stopper. We get a lot of looks at different artists, Alex Katz, Jenny Holzer, lots of love for Jenny Holzer, which I loved. Uh, slander on David Sedaris. Oh, can I read it to you? I think it was hilarious. They were talking about seeing Menopause, the musical, and they were just listing like a bunch of stuff that they found trite and they ended up on David Sedaris and they said, he's small and mean and hysterically funny and appropriately gay. By appropriately, I mean small and mean and hysterically funny. So good. And then goes on to say, David Sedaris and everything on this list finally feels touristy. David Sedaris, touristy? I mean, sure. But at least David Sedaris, when he writes a line, he expands upon it. Eileen Miles, they'll write a line and then not expand on it. I think Eileen makes very interesting observations and contrasts it with contradicting thoughts, other tangents, which I don't mind if I'm at a cafe with a friend and talking, but in like the written form, in the essayic form, it just doesn't work. It's deflated and dry and flat. And they'll make these really incredible observations but not expand upon them. 
So the observations come off as one-liners, there are no punchlines, and yeah, you're left feeling not a bit smarter, but just like, oh, whoa, okay, that's cool, all right, and then you're on to the next thing. But there are very, very interesting moments in here. They went on a road trip with Bjork. There's a talk with Daniel Day-Lewis. There's just stacks and stacks of many, many cameos, which I loved. And Eileen Miles lived the life, lived the artist's life, and had many, many very interesting anecdotes. But they, they don't come up to anything, especially their observations on art. There's sort of a chapter of just like observations on art, but they aren't essays. This isn't an essay collection. This is reading somebody's journal, essentially. So I think if you really enjoy the New York art scene in a broad sense, and you enjoy Eileen Miles' brain, I think you'll really enjoy this. But other than that, sits out of three stars for me. I'm pretty sure Sophie has a bunch of other interesting notes to make, and um, I think that's what makes this probably a more entertaining buddy read in the chat versus in the actual text. Yeah. And then as far as updates, I've got one last chunker, which I think I'm gonna finish today. This isn't really a chunker, but it's a collection of short stories, and I'm enjoying it a lot. I've got two stories left. I'm in the middle of one. But yeah, I'll save my thoughts for later. Really, really enjoying sort of the small town vibes set in Texas and just complications and friendships, marriages, relationships. Good stuff. Oh, okay. And yes, we have book mail. Okay. Their name is X Libris Alex on Instagram. I'll leave their handle below. But they sent me, they sent me a book. We did a little cute book exchange and they, I was wanting this for a really long while because I really want to watch the movie, but I don't want to watch the movie until I've read the book. Anyway, let's unbox this. Came all the way from Australia. <sighs> okay. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. J.G. Ballard's Crash. A brutal erotic novel. Okay, isn't that cover just... Okay, should I take it out of the plastic? J.G. Ballard's Crash. Yes, I want to watch the David Cronenberg film. And I know it's fantastic. So excited to see it. But I wanted to read this first. I read a J.G. Ballard last year. And that, that, sh that was wild. Let me tell you, he's, he's crazy. Ballard is crazy. He invents these like immense crazy worlds and they're just like you're just like what the heck how did he get here but incredible writer major control in sentence plot and direction in terms of uh, narrative look at that cover it is so so gorgeous oh i love just crash and then the orange very much looks like they're in the desert and then just this deceased nude woman on the cover it's just and look at that piece of metal just like elegantly placed to censor but yes oh my gosh thanks jugs judy love ya um oh what is this about from what i understand it's about a group of people who have this fetish of having sex in cars or having sex in car crashes here i'll read this blurb for you by Playboy. Maybe you think you know all about sex and all about cars and sex and cars and sex and cars and violence. Ha! Crash lays into the whole syndrome like nothing you've ever dreamed. Ballard can write and it's hard not to get caught up in this minatory vision of the sex technology mystique. J.G. Ballard, Crash, a brutal erotic novel. So, so excited to read this. I think I might make this a spooky read. Who knows? But definitely, we'll save it for maybe October, November. Yes, crash. Okay, um, that's all, folks. I'm chillin'. I, I feel like I've spent my social battery, because next month, there's, uh, 
a bunch of things to do and people to see and so I love the things and the people. I'm just kind of, I'm stretched. I've stretched my limits and I just want to chill. And really, I don't want to go out. It's too hot. Like every time I'm out, I'm just like, it's too hot. It's too hot to be out. And I can't, I can't stand it. So we're being smart and you know, stay indoors and do a bunch of reading. I don't know what I'll pick up next, but I've DNF'd three books this month and I gotta make up for them. I can't believe I spent so much time in two books, like read at like the 67% mark. And I'm just like, I'm so mad that I had to DNF them, but I was just like, I'm not enjoying it. I'm wasting my time. Life is short. I gotta keep moving and that's it. I can't just hate read something and then feel bad about it. Like, no, I mean, life's, life's too short for that. So be well, do good work, keep in touch.